Here's an article from uh, from Mises, the USDA's war on small farms. This is actually last month, I believe, when this article came out, but it is important. And as I'd already mentioned, you know, with through freedomfirstbeef.com with promo code JDR, you can fight back. But that's not uh, this has nothing to do with beef. This is about everything else. So let's get into the article. Most students in America are introduced to the writings of Upton Sinclair. Uh, while they aren't shown his incredible cover up of the. Uh, <laughs> Don't even get me started on that. <laughs> Soviet apologisms. Uh, they are presented with his most famous work, The Jungle. This work tells the tale of Sinclair's investigation into the wretched working conditions of the meat packers. Of its age, between lost limbs and failed inspections, Sinclair writes about the meat being contaminated and bar barbarously prepared. This tale is meant to show the supposed failures of laissez-faire capitalism and its disregard for workers and health. Readers are supposed to walk away with a firm belief in the and the need for the regula regulation of these firms. Hooray! Uh, here, here comes the mighty state to provide safety to the masses that would otherwise be be made sick by crony capitalism. That's that's just far from the truth. I mean, that's just not not reality. But I understand. You know, we, they say it's about food safety, but it really D, uh, did boil down to control here in the United States, and, and there might, might have been a time where such regulations were necessary. But in today's America, in today's world, we have the technology to be able to, you know, people, pe voices aren't silenced unless they're silenced by government itself. You know, if we as as people could just could fight our own fights, we've never been more empowered to do so, and yet we've never been more hampered from doing so. We're empowered through the this vast vast uh, array of technologies that allow us to have a bigger voice than we've ever had but then we're stifled right back by government and agencies that work with our government to try to to label us as misinformation there's a reason why you know you will not find this show on youtube <laughs> i've tried i've gone through like three and a half different different accounts on youtube they just keep getting rid of me I don't know, something about vaccines or stolen elections or, or climate change or whatever, transgenderism, something. I always end up saying something that gets me in trouble with them. So I just gave up. But back to the article. Um, uh, Murray Rothbard himself documents in the progressive era uh, the truth of the United States Department of Agriculture's regulations. Rothbard observed that nearly every inspection passed in any form of legislature or bureaucracy was fueled by protectionism from existing firms. These regulations were not there to provide safety to, consumer, to consumers, but rather to keep competition out of the marketplace by fiat. Rothbard states that the only meaningful definition of monopoly is an exclusive legal right granted by the state. Perhaps then the only meaningful de definition of so-called monopoly powers is a firm's ability to push regulation that harms the competition through the state. It's not just the it's not just them. Okay, it's not just the you know competition via uh, in business. This is also about competition for information. This is why we're seeing the, the burgeoning industry of fact checkers get worse and worse and worse. It's evolving. There's this new one. You know, I used to think that oh, I forgot the name of it. Uh, not not the fact checkers, the NewsGuard. NewsGuard. I always thought the NewsGuard was was Marxist and and horrible. There's a new one out there, and I'll be talking about them a little bit later. <laughs> That's actually even worse. Crazy as as hard as that is to believe, even worse. Uh, back to the article. Even today, the USDA and its regulations threaten to crush small farmers under its heel. A small hobby farm, or even one that is simply isn't a factory farm, can hardly stand up to the regulations. Meat processing in the United States must be done under the supervision of a USDA inspector if the goal is to sell the animal products to another person. A farmer cannot simply butcher his or her own animal, cut it into, into the usual meat products, and sell it at a farm stand. That would violate USDA regulations. Regardless of the ability of a farmer to inspect and keep their own animals healthy or um, of their own skill in butchering livestock, they must have a USDA inspector to sell the product on the market. Now, explain to me, just, I mean, in today's world, explain to me how that's beneficial at all, okay? Let's say, you know, a small farmer goes out there and and they do something you know, there, there, maybe there's something unsanitary and somebody gets sick from it. That farm's done. You don't need government to step in, okay? 
that that farm will be gone because, or maybe not gone, but at least chastised, their business will be harmed as a result of that because of social media, because of the internet, because of our ability to to get the word out when things go south, right? Okay. So what do we need the USDA for? They're only there to prevent the small guys from competing against the big guys. They're only there to keep to keep us not healthy, but unhealthy, oddly enough. Back to the back to the um, article. Um, this inspector is not provided, though, free of charge by the USDA through taxpayer dollars. Rather, the individual meat processor must pay out of pocket for these services. As far as meat processing goes, the USDA charges anywhere from $86 to $238 an hour for inspections. This does not guarantee the quality of the meat. It simply gives a rubber stamp to large processors that can afford to pay the processor. Bigger is not necessarily better. And I would argue that bigger is definitely worse, uh, as one can apply basic logic to the inspection process. Those moving larger volumes of meat are able to afford to pay an inspector hourly by throwing large volumes of the goods over and over in a constant stream of their workers and the inspectors, mistakes can be made. This method of inspection incentivizes for large volumes rather than quality. It's rare to come across a small farm uh, causing health issues but it has become increasingly common to come across recalls from larger processors like Purdue and, and Lakeside Refrigerated. These large outlets can certainly afford to pay for an, an inspector, but that doesn't guarantee quality. As a matter of fact, like I said, and like I think they're trying to say here in the article, it can harm quality. If your goal is not to put out good food, but if your goal is to pass inspection, those are two separate things. You might say, oh, but inspection is supposed to, to be used to, to make the food higher quality and make the food safer, right? That's the idea of inspection, but it's not. Okay, but way back when, gosh, how long has it been now? Um, when I was in college, I worked at a restaurant. I was a restaurant manager in Oklahoma City. And I, um, you know, we would regularly get ready, do our things, and we would always know when the inspectors were coming, right? Or sometimes, we, sometimes they would pop in, but usually we'd know when the inspectors were coming. And if we knew when the inspector was coming, we would do certain things to clean that were different from how we would clean normally. Now, I would argue that how we clean normally was safer, okay? We weren't trying to clean areas that didn't, that, that weren't you know, basically touching food. We didn't care so much about those areas, all right? But you had to care about those areas for the inspector. Whereas, you know, our focus when the inspector wasn't coming was to make sure that 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 the place, that basically any place that could touch food or you know firsthand or secondhand, that those areas were always maintained a degree of cleanliness and, and sanitation. That's not the case when you're getting ready for an inspector. And I would argue, I don't know, I've never been in the meatpacking business, but I would argue that it's probably the same thing there. <sighs> In a free market, let's talk free market because that's really what this is about. In a free market, quality and safety can be ensured by a variety of means. An organization like the USDA might arise, but it would be held accountable by profits and losses. Individual processing firms may pay the free market USDA to verify the health of their product. However, if the free market USDA fails to stop an illness from arising, uh, through their own inspection failures, they may lose their credibility with both consumers and the producers that pay them. Profit and loss provide greater incentives for success than a bureaucracy that theoretically cannot go under. There is no reason for them to get it right. They're there to check boxes. They're there to, to be a rubber stamp for the ones they like or the ones that somebody above them likes and to be a pain in the butt for somebody that they don't like or that they're, somebody above them doesn't like. Don't get me started on the Amish farmer. I'm trying to get them on. The Ar <laughs> that story is so infuriating. I'm not going to get into it today. I'm trying to keep it even. I'm trying to keep it keep keep it under <laughs> under an eleven. Okay, but we, we'll get there eventually. Even better is the back to the article. Even better is the decentralization of the food processing industry altogether. Greater accountability can be held to more local inst institutions, such as farmers currently barred from processing their own food. Word of mouth spreads quickly amongst neighbors. Any exchange that a consumer is comfortable making, uh, they should be allowed to, knowing full well the risks. Why should a government get between a farmer and their customers buying meat from them? This is the entire basis for Thomas Massey's Processing Revival and Interstate Meat Exemption Act, the Prime Act, which would circumvent the USDA's jurisdiction for, exchange, uh, for exchanges at a community level. The act would exempt customer slaughterhouses from 
I'm sorry, custom slaughterhouses from USDA inspection requirements if the exchange occurs within state borders and follows any state-specific laws. It would be an important step toward decentralizing the food system. If conservatives and libertarians care about competition for, for small farms, they should support def defanging federal bureaucracy used by large corporations to capture markets. The USDA should have its regulatory power removed, and the ability to provide safety in food should be returned to the market. Markets provide a far more welcoming place for producers and a far safer result for consumers. They'll just work better, okay? Basically, if you were to privatize the, the, the role of the USDA from an inspection perspective, now they're incentivized. Now they, you know, a private, a USDA inspector goes in there, oh, you know, like I said, it's about, oh, I like this guy, I don't like that guy, you know, pain in the butt for that guy and, and rubber stamp for this guy. But you put a business behind it. You, you put people's paychecks on the line. Now all of a sudden, Boom. Now they're 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 being accurate. They're actually looking for not things to check off, not trying to be a pain in the butt. They're trying to make sure that the food that they're inspecting is safe for the people that are going to be eating it. That's the difference between the bureaucratic state and a free market economy. Whether it's bugs or lab-grown meat or whatever they're pushing for the sake of climate change to replace good old-fashioned pasture-raised beef, uh, they're pushing it. They're pushing it hard, and it's time for us to wake up. It's time for us to realize that, that we need to start stocking up on long-term storage beef. You can do that by going to freedomfirstbeef.com. That's freedomfirstbeef.com and using promo code JDR. You will get freeze-dried ribeye, freeze-dried... New York Strip Tenderloin, uh, and of course their original steak product, and with 15% off, it's time. These are the, the, this is sous vide, so it's already cooked, it's freeze dried, it's got 10 to 25 years shelf life without refrigeration, of course. So go check it out, freedomfirstbeef.com, and start stocking up on long-term storage beef today. Promo code JDR, don't forget that part. 